five things about the Mercedes C63 Cabriolet I dislike. It's gotta be first these tiny rear brakes. Why? Why Mercedes? And I know you can do it because on the W204, they've had large rear brakes. I think it was a four piston in the rear, six piston in the front, but why go to these puny brakes? It's a powerful car, but disappointing rear brake setup. And then here we are now, see look at the front brakes, a lot larger. Another thing I don't like about this brake dust is insane. This is uh, after just one week of cleaning the wheels, the car only goes like a few miles. Um, it probably gets driven probably about uh, 100 miles a week. It is, it's excessive. Also that comes with the type of brakes that it is. I understand this is a performance car, um, but I wish there was a little compromise in between. Even their rear brakes get a lot. And since we're on the topic of brakes, let's take a look at this one. Notice how the uh, cross drilled, how they seem to go in a pattern this way, like kind of here's the front of the car and you can see the direction of the rotors, the, the cross drilled, okay? So we come to the passenger side. They're facing forward. Just my, and here's the front of the car. Again, we're on the passenger side. Just to show you, this passenger side. No camera trickery here, this, this is the way it is. Let's go to the rear brakes, see if that's the same way. The rears are doing the same thing. It's facing the other direction. Walk around to the driver's side. And the way it, I would think how they should be for cross drilled. Now the rears are slotted and drilled. The fronts are just drilled. But yeah, they it's like the opposite. Like they couldn't make a separate rotor for, um, you know, each side of the car. Now you probably think, well, that's just how they're designed. Well, look at this. This is M3. Look at the rotor, driver's side. See how they're going backwards. Let's go to the back side. Okay. Go in the opposite. They're still going in the same direction because they're different rotors for each one. See here. Another dislike is the seat belts. They flap in the wind when the top is down. So you have the top down, the back seat, rear seat belts, they tend to flap in the wind. You just hear constant noise. I wish there was a way that they put it padded or maybe design it better so it doesn't flap in the wind so much. Also, I wish the car had more sound. And I'll put you a couple of clips from when I did the review. But the car has two different sounds depending on which mode you're in. So if you're in sport mode or sport plus, there's a lot of more artificial sound coming through the cabin of the car. When you're in comfort mode, the car is a lot quieter. But where the, the, the C63, I always remember having a, a, just a perfect exhaust note, no matter how you drove the car. So you drove the car, you know, normal, it was quiet. But when you stepped on it, you heard that exhaust just, you know, everything was out of there. Now, I guess maybe could with the four liter, um, Tundra V8, it just doesn't have the the sound that it needs. Yes, it just and comfort mode, you don't hear it. Did you guys hear any? Did you guys hear any noises? I did not. It's very quiet. Let's take a look at this. It's fake. You can see right in there. Those tips. That's just because it's cost. If the car was hit from the rear and 
the bumper was damaged, you can replace that whole rear balance. You don't have to replace the exhaust. When you start damaging the exhaust, then the price adds up pretty quickly. So that's probably the most reason why I can think of that. I see a lot of manufacturers doing it, and it's most likely probably that reason just when the car gets repaired. One last thing I wanted to add to this is the nine speed um, transmission. I feel it's occasionally jerky. Uh, I feel like sometimes that it doesn't understand or figure out what, what gear wants to be in. And it's more prevalent when the car has, is near a stop or it's just like you're, you're rolling to a stoplight, the light is red and just as you, before you come to a complete stoplight is green, you hit the gas and the car has this hesitation and it ends up being this, and it, it sort of stumbles. And initially when my wife complained about it, I thought, oh, she's just driving around in comfort mode all the time. And maybe it's just used to, it, the car is quickly trying to get into those higher gears. So I, when I drive it, I'm in always in sport, sport plus. It holds gears longer and it's always, even a sport plus, it is still doing the exact same thing. It doesn't happen all the time. I can't like replicate it. I can't on camera, but it's just, when it catches you off guard, it's like, whoa, it, it feels like you can't drive. And I know that this is a torque converter for wet clutch, I believe. So I can't understand why it, it, it could be a jerky. I feel like it, it should be better than that. You know, M3, I would expect that because it is a automated manual. This car, it is not. So uh, yeah, nine speed transmission, jerky. <laughs>